Hey everybody. When AM5 motherboards were first announced, there was a slew of offerings released. However, one motherboard caught my eye the most, and I knew it would have to be the first one I looked at. And speaking of the ASRock B650 Live Mixer. What intrigued me was its bold design aesthetic, a departure from the mostly black plus accent color of many motherboards, or white. More than the design, what interested me were also the features contained within it. According to ASRock's marketing, they purposely created this motherboard not just for gamers, but for content creators and creative professionals as well. Now let's unbox the B650 Live Mixer and see if its loud design is just noise, or if the features it offers will be music to your ears. Welcome to the middle of nowhere. As with nearly all my motherboard videos, I like to have a look at the box before seeing what's inside. Graffiti Never Fades is ASRock's tagline for this motherboard, and the box is a reflection of not just the sentiment, but also the motherboard's loud and flamboyant design. Its orange and yellow graffiti splattered paint boldly proclaims this won't be your typically designed motherboard. Additionally, on the front you'll see labels showing DDR5 and PCIe Gen 5 support, the latter of which I'll go into more detail later. Finally, the front declares this is a B650 chipset motherboard with AM5 socket compatibility, which means AMD Zen 4 and later CPUs. The sides of the box don't provide any pertinent information regarding the motherboard's features, but the back does show off the motherboard with some nice images as well as the new AM5 socket and a list of features. One thing is for certain, if I saw this box or the Intel counterpart, which is predominantly purple, at a store like Best Buy or Micro Center, I'd definitely pause to have a look. Upon opening the box, you'll see the motherboard in an anti-static bag, and it is further protected by foam padding. Do make sure you have a box cutter or scissors handy as the motherboard is held fast to the padding by zip ties. Underneath it, you'll find the included accessories, which consist of an instruction sheet on how to install an AM5 CPU, the manual, which appears to be rather fleshed out, which is great, but if you need, it's also available online as a PDF, two SATA 6 gigabit per second cables, Velcro cable straps, a case badge, and finally, four screws and one standoff for your M.2 slots. If I were to describe how the live mixer looks, in a word, it would be popping. The graffiti design from the box carries over into nearly every aspect of the motherboard, from the PCB to the IO shield to the various M.2 power delivery and chipset he sinks. Not only do you get the splatter design, but the metal heat sinks are very reflective, reminiscent of a foil comic book cover. Even the back of the motherboard is tagged with the bright white live mixer. Functionally speaking, chunky pieces of metal serve as heat sinks for the M.2 slots, chipset, and power delivery. The power delivery heat sinks aren't connected by a heat pipe, but I'll go into more detail about heat and performance later in the video. The rear I.O. shield is integrated, which is awesome to see, especially for a motherboard at this price point. While some might find this motherboard too loud with the bright oranges, yellows, and whites, I really like it. It's a deviation from the norm. ASRock created a theme and added design elements accordingly using paint splatters and text. There's even a little bit of RGB lighting thrown in for good measure, as there's some down-firing lighting on the lower right side of the motherboard. Even if you do consider the live mixer a bit too punk, I still think it could easily become a central piece of an elegant PC build, especially if you put it inside something refined like the Fractal North. The loud paints and bright metal mixed with the wood and some subtle lighting could turn your PC into an amazing looking and functional conversation piece. ASRock advertises the live mixer as a motherboard specifically geared towards content creators. Let's see if this statement holds true by seeing what features it includes. The ASRock B650 Live Mixer is an ATX motherboard and measures 305mm by 244mm, or 12 inches by 9.6 inches. It has an 8 layer PCB which, according to ASRock, helps prevent bending and also improve signal integrity and system stability. The Live Mixer supports AMD Ryzen CPUs using the AM5 socket. It will not support previous generation Ryzen CPUs. However, with BIOS updates, it should support future CPU releases by AMD that use the AM5 socket. You'll find four RAM slots for your memory on the B650 Live Mixer, and it supports DDR5 non-ECC unbuffered memory with dual channel support. The maximum capacity of RAM you can install is 192GB, which should be enough for nearly any content creator out there. The Live Mixer can support up to 7200 mega transfers per second RAM kits, however the sweet spot for AM5 is around 6000 while striving to get the lowest cast latency possible, which is around 30 to 32. While I do not recommend you only use one RAM stick, if this is your only option you'll want to insert it into slot B2, or the fourth slot away from the CPU. To take advantage of dual channel speeds on your PC, install your RAM in slots A2 and B2 or the second and fourth slots when going away from the CPU. Finally, there's support for Extreme Memory Profiles or XMP as well as Extended Profiles or Expo for overclocking your memory modules. 
You can set these for easy overclocking or manually overclock your RAM within the BIOS. When it comes to PCIe support, you'll find a total of three slots on the live mixer. The top slot is PCIe 4.0 and is by 16 in speed and length, and you'll want to use this slot for your graphics card. It also features ASRock's steel slot technology, which is a metal reinforcement to help prevent heavier GPUs from sagging or even breaking the PCIe slot. There even seems to be enough space between the first and second PCI slots to allow for the installation of at least a dual slot GPU without interfering with the second slot. The second and third slots are both PCIe 4.0 and are by 16 in length, however they are by 4 in speed. While the second slot gets its lanes from the CPU, the third slot is powered by the chipset. Also of note, if you make use of the bottom PCIe slot, you will lose functionality of the M.2 slot marked M2 underscore 3. This is a shame as you'll probably want to make use of all three M.2 slots for additional storage. Speaking of storage, the live mixer only has two SATA 3 6 gigabit per second ports, so if you need to connect a lot of hard drives, you'll need to look at other motherboards, look at PCIe add-in cards, or maybe consider an external storage solution. If you're looking to limit the number of cables cluttering up your PC build and don't mind the anemic number of SATA ports, the live mixer has three M.2 drive slots. The top M.2 slot is fed with PCIe lanes from the CPU and is PCIe 5.0 capable, while the remaining two M.2 slots are PCIe 4.0 and fed from the B650 chipset. To keep temperatures low, your M.2 drives are covered by metal heat sinks with the PCIe 5.0 one being even thicker. Regarding M.2 NVMe drive lengths, the Live Mixer supports 60 and 80mm drives. Need RAID? There is support for RAID 0 and 1 for SATA storage devices and RAID 0, 1, and 10 for M.2 drives. Do note you'll need additional M.2 expansion cards to support RAID 10. My advice regarding storage is this. Reserve the PCIe 5.0 M.2 slot as creative storage such as a scratch or asset drive. Being able to make use of the fast read and write speeds will come in handy, especially if you're a video maker. For your OS, put that on PCIe 4.0 M.2 drive using the M.2 underscore 2 slot, and finally reserve the M.2 underscore 3 as additional storage for your files. The two SATA ports can be used for 2.5 inch SSDs or even spinning drives. Personally, I'd opt for SSDs here and maybe consider getting two 4 terabyte SSDs as prices have come down on these higher capacity devices. These can then be used for games, video files, images, documents, and other long-term storage. Sure, the SSDs won't be as fast as M.2 storage, but they'll be faster than platter drives. Finally, I'd reserve using platter storage for a NAS as backup. Need to make use of ARGB and RGB headers? You'll find three 3-pin 5V ARGB headers and one 4-pin 12V RGB header on the live mixer. Two of the ARGB headers are on the top right of the motherboard and the third is at the bottom next to the RGB header. As previously mentioned, the live mixer does have some integrated ARGB. The lights are on the bottom right of the motherboard by the SATA ports on the back, so they'll fire down onto your case's motherboard tray. The live mixer has a total of six 4-pin PWM fan headers. Four are chassis fan slash water pump connectors that can support 2 amp 24 watt devices. Then there's one fan header for your CPU which can support 1 amp 12 watt fans and finally a CPU slash water pump connector which also supports 2 amp 24 watt fans or pumps. This is where you'd plug in your AIO pump and then you'd plug the fans into the CPU header. As far as locations go, the CPU and CPU slash water pump connectors are at the top right of the motherboard. One chassis fan water pump connector is in the middle of the motherboard just below the rear I.O. and the remaining three headers are at the bottom of the motherboard. The ASRock Live Mixer comes with a decent amount of internal I.O. for peripherals and for connecting to your case's front I.O. As always, I like to start with the power connectors and you'll find your standard 24 pin ATX main power on the upper right side of the motherboard. For CPU power, the Live Mixer has two 8 pin EPS 12 volt connectors and these are located on the top left by the rear I.O. In the past, I have stated if a motherboard has two CPU connectors that you only really need to connect one of them to your power supply as the second tends to be supplemental for high power demanding CPUs and for overclockers. And the case is the same here. The 7950X will not max out one 8 pin connector so you only really need to connect one. However, it won't hurt if you connect both. You'll just have to make sure the power supply you have or intend to buy has two 8 pin CPU cables. If you decide to plug in only one, it also doesn't matter which 8 pin connector you choose. Moving on to USB headers, there are two internal USB 2.0 headers at the bottom of the motherboard and two USB 3.2 Gen 1 headers on the side. One is below the 24 pin connector and the second, which is at a 90 degree angle, is just above a SATA port. 
It's great to see two USB 3.2 Gen 1 headers, especially for those users with a case that has four ports like the Lian Li O11 Evo XL. Finally, there's one front panel type C USB 3.2 Gen 2 x 2 header. This header can support transfer speeds up to 20 gigabits per second, and according to the manual, each USB 2.0 header allows for two additional USB 2.0 ports. Due to the bulkiness of USB 3.2 Gen 1 cables, I always recommend a low-profile adapter for PC builders as this makes cable management so much easier, and it also makes your PC build cleaner looking. Check the description for a link to one I've used numerous times. Heading into the home stretch, we come to the remaining connectors on the motherboard. On the left is the front audio header for your case mic and headphone jacks. This has support for HD audio. In between a fan and USB 2.0 header is the clear CMOS header. Unfortunately, the B650 live mixer does not have any onboard power, reset, or clear CMOS buttons, so you'll be stuck clearing your CMOS the old-fashioned way with a screwdriver or a jumper if you have one. Just touch the two pins to bridge them, holding for 5 to 10 seconds, and then bam, CMOS cleared. Next to the USB 2.0 headers are your system panel and power LED speaker headers. The system panel is where you'll connect your power and reset switches, as well as your power and hard drive activity LEDs. The power LED and speaker header is for a chassis speaker. I'm unsure if it allows you to plug in an internal speaker, which you could use for status and troubleshooting alert beeps. Below the second SATA port is a peculiar header we don't often see on AMD motherboards, and that's a Thunderbolt connector. Use this 5-pin header with ASRock Thunderbolt for AIC card. You'll want to plug that card into your second PCIe slot as that's the default, although you should be able to use the third slot as well if the second is being used by a capture card. The final header to be covered on the live mixer is the Trusted Platform Module or TPM, and on board is an SPI-TPM header. It is a 14-1 or 13-pin header, and it is below and to the right of the top PCIe slot just above the BIOS ROM chip. Speaking of BIOS, as with their B450 and B550 motherboards, ASRock continues to put a sticker on the BIOS chip to inform you of the version installed on your motherboard. Mine comes with version 1.05, which is the original BIOS when the motherboard hit the shelves in late 2022. I'll definitely want to update the BIOS to add better RAM compatibility, install security fixes, and update a GISA and more. As previously mentioned, you won't find any onboard power reset or clear CMOS buttons on the B650 Live Mixer. I will continue to bemoan the absence of such quality of life features on a motherboard that was released with an original MSRP of $229.99. At the very least, a clear CMOS button could have been included. It's frustrating that while motherboard costs have gone up for newer generation CPUs, features don't always follow. Thankfully, the Live Mixer can be found for much less than its original price, which I'll also cover later. While there is no code reader for troubleshooting your PC on the ASRock B650 Live Mixer, it does have four LED lights. These are located on the right side of the motherboard above the two ARGB headers. There are four lights, one for the CPU, DRAM, VGA, and boot. From what I've seen in the manual, they do not seem to be color-coded like you might find on other motherboards, and instead are all red. During boot up, if the lights go off, then your PC is functioning normally. Do note, you'll need to have some patience on your initial boot as it might take a while to get to the BIOS or Windows while the PC is training your memory, and during this process, it's normal for the DRAM status LED to blink. If one of the lights stays on, then something might be wrong for that particular component, and you can use the LEDs as a starting point for troubleshooting. Moving to the onboard audio, the B650 Live Mixer uses the Realtek ALC897 audio codec, which has support for 7.1 channel HD audio. The motherboard also uses Nehemek audio. However, on the rear audio, there are only two audio jacks for your headset and mic and an SPDIF port. To get 7.1 surround sound enabled using only the PC, you'll have to also make use of your case's front audio ports in addition to the two rear ones. I don't feel this is optimal and will more than likely result in a mess of cables. Because I didn't really understand why ASRock would go this route, I decided to research the ALC897. During my research, I found the codec to be a middle ground one, and not as feature full as other codecs. Also from my research, I read comments describing the ALC897 as adequate and gets the job done. This didn't sound like a ringing endorsement to me, so I decided to contact ASRock and ask them why they use this codec and why limit the audio ports on the back of the motherboard that is aimed at content creators, which includes music creation. Here is the answer they provided. As you mentioned, ASRock's B650 Live Mixer is aimed at video slash music creators or streamers. We believe that these users would prefer to use USB headsets, external DACs, USB or SPDIF, or add in audio cards for better audio quality rather than relying on onboard audio solutions. Therefore, whether we use the ALC897, ALC1220, or even a higher grade audio codec, it remains a basic onboard solution that may not fully meet the needs of these users. 
This is why we have opted for the basic ALC897, which we consider sufficient for this purpose. Another reason for our design choice is the inclusion of two PCIe by 4 slots, allowing users to install audio cards, capture cards, or Thunderbolt cards. Expandability is a key feature of this motherboard, providing users with versatile options for customization. My interpretation of this response is as follows. ASRock included an OK audio codec on the live mixer, more than likely to save on costs, which gets passed down to consumers, while leaving it to the end user to both choose and attach much better performing devices internally or externally. ASRock recognizes the limitations of the Realtek codecs and also recognizes there are better performing USB and PCIe devices available. While you can totally make use of the audio solution the motherboard has and plug in your headset and speakers into the live mixer, should you need something better, there are options available to you. For instance, I am still using my external USB connected Sound Blaster X7 headphone amp and DAC to power my bookshelf speakers and Sennheiser HD280 Pro headphones, and I bought that like 7 years ago I think. Should you take this as ASRock skimping out on the audio? I'm inclined to say no. ASRock provides a basic solution with the ALC897 codec, which people can use to start off with and should they need something better, the motherboard can support it via PCIe or USB solutions. Moving on from the Realtek codec to the other audio features on the live mixer motherboard is the Nehemic Audio. For those who don't know, Nehemic Audio is described as offering the most engaging listening experience with vibrant and rich details. But this is just marketing mumbo jumbo. To find out what Nehemic really is required additional research on my part, and I found it seems to be a separate companion audio driver and app from SteelSeries that supports HD 7.1 audio, helps improve audio and speech quality, but how I'm not really sure, provides 3D audio while gaming so you can better hear where footsteps and shots are coming from, has volume and voice stabilization to prevent volume spikes, has an equalizer, and finally, during my research, the general consensus amongst end users is Nehemic is basically crap and can cause conflicts with other audio software. Taking all that information into account, my advice regarding Nehemic is, if it's automatically installed, to use it, see if you like it, and if it causes issues with your system, uninstall it. If you'd like to find out more about Nehemic Audio, I've included a link in the description. I'll just end all of this talk about audio with this. If you're a content creator of any kind and dialogue, music, and sounds are extremely important, you'll want to invest in third-party devices that will help you make your creations the best possible. Like the B550PG Velocita and other ASRock motherboards, there's an empty M.2 slot on the live mixer specifically for a wireless card. Additionally, the rear I.O., which I'll get to in a moment, has antenna punch-out holes already present if you want to use those instead of a PCI slot on your case. While I'd like a wireless capable version of the live mixer, I do like that ASRock includes the slot for us to add this capability ourselves. Doing so also allows me to choose which product to install and make upgrades as Wi-Fi and Bluetooth standards evolve. If you do intend to add a Wi-Fi card, make sure to research M.2 cards that are E-keyed and 2230 sized. Now we get to the rear I.O. and as mentioned earlier in the video, the rear I.O. shield is integrated, so no worrying about forgetting to install it into your case when you build your PC. It also carries over the graffiti aesthetic, which is a nice touch. Starting at the top or the left, we have our display out ports. Point blank, the integrated graphics or iGPU on Zen 4 CPUs is not for gaming. Instead, it's meant for basic display support, which will come in handy if you need to do any troubleshooting or if you're waiting for your graphics card to come in the mail. Zen 4 based APUs or CPUs with higher performing integrated graphics have not yet been released. However, when they are, you'll be able to make use of their graphical processing power with the live mixers onboard display ports. There's one HDMI 2.1 port and one display port 1.4 port. Both have support for HDCP 2.3 and support resolutions up to 4K at 120Hz. The HDMI port also supports HDR. One of the selling points ASRock marketed for this motherboard are all the USB ports, enough to satisfy even the heaviest of peripheral users, and the B650 live mixer does not disappoint, as there are 14 in all. I definitely love seeing all those USB ports. You'll find a total of 8 USB 2.0 ports, which will cover nearly all USB peripherals such as mice, most keyboards, USB microphones, the Elgato Stream Deck, and more. There are 4 USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports. These have data transfer speeds of up to 5 gigabits per second. You can use these ports for fast storage devices, the Elgato Stream Deck XL, or any other peripheral that requires a USB 3 connection, such as the Corsair K70 RGB Pro keyboard. The top two blue ports are Ultra USB power ports which provide stable power and a better sound experience for your USB audio devices. The reason for this being these ports provide 5 volts of power transformed from your power supply's 12 volt rail. These ports also supposedly prevent noise from other devices or any RGB LED lighting. 
The bottom two yellow ports are designated as lightning gaming ports, and as the name implies, these ports are aimed at gamers and utilize two different controller interfaces that assist gamers in connecting high-speed mice and keyboards with lower jitter and latency. I have no way of testing the validity of these statements, but I don't think it will hurt if you plug your keyboard and mouse into these ports. The worst that can happen is nothing, and the best is that you'll get more headshots and have cleaner sound. Honestly, I wish ASRock and other companies gave us links to documents that provided in-depth explanations for people who want to go beyond the marketing and learn more about these things. Finally, there are two USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, one Type A and one Type C. These have data transfer speeds of up to 10 gigabits per second, and they'd be of use for external storage devices, audio mixers, or anything else that requires either a lot of data throughput or a Type-C connection. All these USB ports definitely give an edge to the live mixer, as you'll be able to connect nearly any and all devices needed to get your gaming, streaming, voice recording, or any other setup going. In the middle of the I.O. shield is the BIOS flashback button. This allows you to update the BIOS without having a CPU or RAM installed. For full instructions on how to use the BIOS flashback button, definitely consult the manual. Also note, the USB port you'll plug your flash drive into when flashing the BIOS is outlined in white, or the fourth USB 2.0 port between the bottom USB 3.2 Gen 1 Lightning port and USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C port. Above the USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports is the Ethernet port, and the Live Mixer uses the Realtek Dragon RTL8125BG solution. This is a 2.5 gigabit LAN port that supports speeds of up to 2500 megabits per second. Accompanying the hardware is the Dragon 2.5 LAN software, which has auto-adjusting bandwidth control, network usage statistics, optimized settings for gaming, browser use and streaming, and user customized priority control. From a glance, this software seems to give you a lot of control on how your PC utilizes your network. While I've already spoken at length about the audio solution on this motherboard, I just want to reiterate the only rear ports you'll find are a microphone input jack, a line out jack for headphones or active speakers, and an SPDIF port which you can use to connect external audio interfaces to your PC such as a receiver or DAC. Finally, both input and output jacks are gold plated for cleaner audio. Finally, we come to the power delivery. The B650 Live Mixer has a 17 or 14 plus 2 plus 1 power phase delivery with smart power stages featuring Dr. Moss. 14 phases are dedicated to the V-Core and it has 60 amp MOSFETs. It also has Nichicon 12K capacitors and is optimized for monitoring current and temperature for each phase. There are also 2 ounce copper inner layers on the PCB to help provide stable signal traces, which helps keep temperatures down and provide higher efficiency for overclocking. Speaking of temperatures, the two heat sinks for the power delivery are massive chunks of metal. While there is no heat pipe connecting them, their bulk should be substantial enough to dissipate any heat. Here's what Hardware Unboxed, PC Magazine, and Buildzoid have said about the Live Mixer's power delivery. Regarding the VRM temperatures, the ASRock B650 Live Mixer came in 11th place out of 35 motherboards tested by Hardware Unboxed. Its VRM temps during a 1-hour Cinebench R23 test using a 7950X was 61C. To put this in perspective, the first place VRM temperature was 50 degrees Celsius and last place came in at 104. In the video, Steve says any of the boards shown here running at sub-80 degree temperatures should be purchased based on the price and features, not how cool they run. Regarding the live mixer specifically, he didn't really comment on the power delivery itself, but at least we got to see how well temperatures were kept in check. He did go on to call the live mixer a unique looking board, but nothing special in terms of features. He also called out the crazy amount of USB ports. PC Magazine said the power delivery proved to be plenty enough to handle their Ryzen 7950X at both stock and overclock speeds. The author went on to say the big VRM heatsinks do an excellent job of keeping power delivery running within spec. Overclocking potential is limited only by your cooling. And finally, Buildzoid, who is known for going into detail regarding motherboard power delivery and circuitry, called the VRM very powerful and the smart stages efficient, and that you won't have a problem overclocking a 7950X with this motherboard. Ultimately, he used the term overkill many times with regards to the power delivery on the live mixer, and he said in terms of MOSFETs used and controllers used, this is as good as any high-end AM5 motherboard. Overall, the power delivery on the B650 live mixer is powerful and the heat sinks keep temperatures in check. These two things in conjunction together will let you get the most out of any Zen 4 CPU you choose. Let's talk cost. At release, the ASRock B650 Live Mixer sold for $229.99, and I feel this price is a bit steep, considering the paltry amount of SATA ports you get combined with having to choose between using either a third PCIe slot or a third M.2 drive. If this motherboard still costs that much, I'd urge people to keep looking. However, in recent months, the Live Mixer's price has settled down to around $179.99, which is much more competitive, even when taking those compromises into account. But wait! 
Even better, within the last few days, I've seen the price drop further to $149.99, making the live mixer the least expensive Ace TX B650 motherboard I could find. While I do not anticipate this price becoming the new norm for the live mixer, I can definitely say give the motherboard a look to see if it fits your needs, and if so, act fast before the price creeps back up. Bottom line, when it comes to cost, I feel $179.99 is a good price for what the B650 live mixer offers. And this brings us to my final thoughts. At its current price range of $149.99 to $179.99, the ASRock B650 Live Mixer is a priced performant motherboard with loads of features, all wrapped up in an aesthetically pleasing package. Its design is a deviation from the norm, and the loud oranges, yellows, and paint splatters really make the Live Mixer unique and stand out from the pack. While its design might not appeal to everyone, I for one love it. Additionally, as with the B450 and B550 chipsets that came before it, the Live Mixer's B650 chipset does not deviate from having end users choose some functionality or feature over another when using certain components. In the Live Mixer's case, you either make use of a third PCIe slot or a third M.2 drive. You can't have both. Another compromise this board makes is only having two SATA ports. I get it. Cutting SATA ports probably allows for more USB ports both on the rear I.O. and internally. If you're a prepared content creator or one with a larger budget, you probably already have, or intend to have, your most important assets stored externally anyway in the form of a NAS, a dedicated server, or even cloud storage, so you wouldn't really miss more SATA ports. However, ASRock shouldn't assume end users will or can rely on external storage, especially if they're just getting started. Forcing them to do so due to a lack of ports is short-sighted and adds extra cost to the PC build. Ultimately, if you need more internal storage, need both multiple PCIe slots, and the ability to use them, as well as many M.2 devices, then you might be better off increasing your budget and buying an X670 or X670E chipset motherboard. And that brings me to my next point. Because ASRock marketed the live mixer towards content creators, which encompasses a wide range of people, including streamers, video makers, graphic designers, musicians, animators, game designers, programmers, and more, I want to see an X670 or 670E version of the Live Mixer alongside the B650 offering. This way, ASRock will have two options for their intended audience at two budget points. All in all, the ASRock B650 Live Mixer is an awesome looking motherboard, and while you do have to make some compromises when it comes to functionality, it's still feature rich. At its current price, it's also very competitive for what it offers. And as such, I can easily say, give this motherboard a look to see if it fits your needs. Who knows? It could end up being the prime component of your build that really ties the PC together. And that's all I have to say about the ASRock B650 Live Mixer motherboard. I really do like how it looks. Do you have this motherboard or have you been looking at it? What are your thoughts on it? Was it easy to set up or did you have any issues? What changes or feedback would you give ASRock regarding the Live Mixer? Leave me a comment down below letting me know. If you're interested in the B650 Live Mixer or the Intel counterpart, I've put links to them in the description. Thanks for watching everybody. If you enjoyed the video or found it helpful, hit that like button and share any questions or comments you might have. Show your support for the channel by getting subscribed and don't forget to turn on notifications so you don't miss out on any future content. And hey, while you're here, why not stick around and check out some of the other videos I've made. I'm Seth and I'll see you next time in the middle of nowhere.